Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about logical database design. Now, ER diagram is a convenient way to represent a initial high level database design. But in practice, in usage, we are going for relational databases and given a ER diagram describing a particular database structure, there is a standard approach for generating the database schema. Okay? So, basically logical database design is the process of mapping or translating the conceptual design that is our ER diagram into the relational model that is the tables. So, deciding how to arrange the attributes of the entities in a business rule, in a business environment into the database structures such as tables of your relational database. The first step before applying the rules in a relational data model in converting is converting our conceptual design to form a suitable relational logical model which is in the form of tables. Now, what are the key rules? The key rules or the basic steps is entity names will automatically become the table names and the attributes. So, when we define a ER diagram, we specify it as entity, it will have a name say for example, student and it will have its attributes. So, automatically the entity name will become the name of the table each attribute will become the each attribute will become the column and finally when i say that it is associated with another entity this relationship is that is connecting the two tables is done with the key of primary key of one table as the foreign key in another table so relationships will be mapped using the foreign key as the key attribute. This is the basic rule. So, now when we move ahead doing this translation, doing this mapping, let us treat one by one constraint. The first and the simple foremost one entity sets to table. So, this employees is an entity set which has got three attributes, the SSN number, the name and the lot. Now, how do I convert this? I am going to create a table which is named as employees. The entity name will become the table name and each attribute there becomes the column here, becomes a column in our database or the relational table. Now, the primary key constraints and the data types, I assume that we know it. So, here the underline indicates that it is the primary key. That is why we are having the key constraint here, primary key. So, in our integrity constraints, we have learnt about these constraints and how to map them. So, we have specified. So, converting entity sets to table is a straightforward thing. Now comes, if at all I have an entity which is multi-valued, we know very well that a single cell can contain atomic value, single value. It cannot store multiple values. Then how do I translate this particular multi-valued attribute? Example is mobile number. In employee, I may have mobile number which will have multiple values. There is a possibility that he will have two numbers. How do I represent this? The concept here is to reduce redundancy, what we will do is the key attribute and the multi-valued attribute becomes a new table with these two things together forming a composite key. So, the other all the other attributes of this particular thing here, okay, we have only name, but you may have the other number or date of joining salary, other details, all of them will go into a separate table called as employee and this multi-valued attribute along with the primary key will get into another table. So, only thing is that only the repeating factor would be the key value, the key constraint other values need not be repeated because of which redundancy can be reduced. Okay. Next is, if at all I have a composite attribute, composite attribute is the one which can be further divided, subdivided. So, such a situation, 
what we do is instead of representing it as a single attribute, each sub part will become an attribute within that particular become a column in the new table. Look at this student with roll number, student name and class is not valid now. Because student name is a composite attribute which consists of two parts, first name and last name, those two subdivided parts will become the individual columns in the new table. Okay? Yes. Coming to the relationship sets, we have seen, look at this. The relationship itself has certain values to be, certain information to be stored along with this. In such situation, simple formation of relation between these two tables with foreign key will not suffice. There should be a table with respect to relation itself. So, such a situation. So, a relationship set like an entity set is mapped to a relation in a relational model. Relation is nothing but a table. So, what we see is the relationship itself is mapped to be a relation. Now, what will happen in that case? To represent a relationship, first we must identify the participating entities. So, in this particular relation, the participating entities are employee, department and location. Now, remember in the new table for this particular relationship, all the keyword primary keys of the participating entities will become the foreign key along with that will also have the descriptive attribute of the relationship set. So, what do we say? In this particular relation called as works in the table what we create as works in will have the primary key of all the participating entities as the foreign keys. See here SSN address and DID of respective tables, employee, location and department are the foreign keys here and they become together composite primary key in the new table. Along with that, the descriptive attribute is also going to be an attribute of that particular table. So, the conversion when we do not have any specific constraint, but relationship needs to hold certain values. It is going to be like this. Okay. Let us see what will happen in a situation where the relationship has a specific identification. Look at this recursive relationship. The employee subordinates report to supervisors, but both supervisor and subordinate are actually the entities of or otherwise the instances of the employees table itself. Now, how do I represent this particular relationship? Who reports to whom? Now, in such situation, the role indicators are created as the columns in the new table called as reports to. The table reports to will have supervisor SSN and subordinate SSN. So, both together becomes a primary key, but please do observe Though the foreign key is SSN of the employee table, I have separately mentioned both of them because the referenced fields are different. Because here SSN refers to the supervisor and this SSN refers to the subordinate. That is why both the foreign keys has to be separately mentioned. But basic idea here is within the same table we are having the foreign key generated. Now, we will see how do we convert the relationship sets with certain constraints to tables. Now, in this particular relationship, employee manages a department, we have a constraint or we have a point to be noted that when he was appointed as a manager or since when he is managing the department has to be recorded. Now, the con key constraint says each department has at most one manager. That means, there cannot be more than one manager for a department. Many to many relationship will not work. At the same time, it is not mandatory one to one, but many departments may have managers or may not have and if they have the managers, only one. Now, how do I represent this particular relationship set? 
as before the primary keys of each participating entities become the uh, key attributes here or become the attributes here and the uh, descriptive attribute since will also become the attribute here okay and they are represented SSN and DID are represented as the foreign keys but look at the primary key constraint. Now here the primary key need not be a combination of SSN and DID because there is a restriction that each department can have at most one manager. That means there is no chance that for the same DID you will have different SSN number. So anyway SSN number is going to be unique so that can become the primary I mean department number can become the primary key. SSN may be there may not be there because we said some departments may not have managers. Okay, but this particular thing DID itself can be a primary key, there need not be a combination of SSN and DID. Okay. Let us see another example, okay, this same thing can also be converted because of the key constraint that at most one manager, we can just say that instead of doing three different tables that is one for employee, one for department and one for manager, manager and department can be combined together. That is you have a department manager where department number, dear name, budget, SSN that is who is the manager. SSN refers to the uh, manager name and which is going to be the foreign key in this particular table. The only drawback would with this would be the rows in which for which department there are no managers will have to be null. The rows that is simply waste of space actually because we are taking the same thing here. There what happens if you have a separate uh, entity or the table created here only for those department where managers are there can be mentioned. Okay? Now, okay. now let us go with the participation constraint. If at all I say that every department must have a manager earlier was at most one, but the total participation constraint says every department should have a manager. Now the difference would be you make sure that your SSN in your department manager table is not null. That is it is mandatory, it is a total participation. Hence there should be an employee who acts as the manager for that particular department. This particular total participation here every department must have a manager is going to be the constraint here which is specified by not null. Anyway this is on delete no action is anyway by default it is there that is because foreign key constraint what we have seen in referential integrity says that you cannot delete a department or delete an employee who is managing a department. So, when he is a manager of a specific department, you cannot directly delete that thing, that employee details from the employee table. If you want to do that, you have to see to that some other employee is assigned to that particular department. This is what is the integrity constraint which will ensure referential integrity is maintained. Okay, okay. This is the same action. Okay. Now, translating a weak entity set. We have seen in our ER models that there are something called as strong and weak entity and weak entity will not have a unique identification but it is dependent on one of the strong entities. So when we see this particular case here, employee takes up a policy which is includes a dependence also. So it is going to be one to many relationship. One employee may have many dependents. Now, how do I identify those dependents? It is going to be the combination of SSN and P name. So, whenever we are having one to many relationship, whenever we are having this particular thing, it is identified uniquely using P name and SSN. Let us just see department policy is going to be a table where the P name, age and cost are the individual attributes of that table and SSN is going to be the foreign key which should be not null. It is a must that it should have value. That means only if that employee is there, dependent is there. If that employee leaves, then all the dependent details also from that department table has to be removed which specifies with this on delete cascade. 
that means if that particular employee is deleted from the employee table all the related entries in the policy table which contains that ssn number has also need to be deleted okay now when we talk about this okay this is weak entity when we talk about aggregation we have seen that aggregation is a concept where this particular relationship itself is treated as an entity that means when i mention this monitors relationship it is dependent on this complete set or otherwise i can say that it will take up the sponsors as the basic table or identifying relationship look at this for the er diagram here employees projects and departments are going to be individual entity sets okay as before the simple entities and the sponsors the sponsors relationship sets are mapped as explained before how is this it will have the primary key of both these participating entities it will have this uh, descriptive attribute and all those things now coming to this monitors monitors has to be a combination of employees and sponsors employees is a table by itself sponsors is a relationship set which is converted to a table so that sponsors table and employees table together gives us your monitor set monitors relation how is it there is going to be a employees ssn and the key attributes of the sponsors which is a combination of did and the project id okay this is going to be the thing and the next one is until when so the descriptive attribute of monitors called as until when is also described into this okay so when we talk about these conversion depending upon the situation depending upon the relationship or the uh, cardinality of the relationship there can be null not null or foreign key ka primary key constraints depending upon uh, how we are going to specify this relationship between or how we are going to connect these two tables using our uh, understanding of er model is going to be converted into our relational tables that is what is basically about logical uh, database design which is all about converting er diagrams into relational model we'll see few more examples in our next session thank you